Okay, I'm not surprised at their gushing over her, but I will say, like her or not, she actually was a great leader within the Democratic caucus. She knew how to whip her caucus, and people respected her. People looked up to her. They would say, I'm not voting for this bill, and she would go talk to them, and she would get them to vote for it. So you have to respect her in that way, and for that reason, Democrats are actually in a tough spot right now, Sean. Yeah. Well, look, while they're losing their, that seasoned leader that they had in her, they appear to be united as they're heading into the next Congress. The same cannot necessarily be said of, of the Republican Party. There's obviously, we mentioned this before, a lot of fractured uh, politics going on there. They tried to elect uh, Kevin McCarthy. They elected the rest of the, the team there. McCarthy lost 36 votes, 31 of them actually voted for our next guest, Andy Biggs of Arizona. Uh, he joins us now. Congressman, Welcome to the show. Let me ask you a question. Uh, first, I do want to get your reaction to this breaking news, the Department of Justice naming a special counsel uh, against President Trump. Tell me what you think of that and the timing of it. Well, I think the timing is suspicious. I think it's unnecessary. Look, they've been investigating President Donald Trump before he was President Donald Trump and since he was President Donald Trump. So. Uh, it, it is to me. It is continued harassment, and it, it's, it's just obvious that this is political in nature, and uh, it's really unfortunate. But it's part of the weaponization of the DOJ, and it's what we've seen all, time and time again. And that's that's what the House Judiciary Committee is going to be investigating ourselves uh, come January third. Okay. All right. So let's get back to uh, internal Republican politics here. Um, you. Challenged Kevin McCarthy. You yourself got 31 votes. Five other members voted for someone other than Kevin. You guys had specific concessions that you wanted before you support Kevin McCarthy in January when it goes up for the full house. Where where are you guys in that uh, discussion with him? Well, you know, Sean and Lindsay, we gave those those uh, some of the rules package that we thought was important, and some of the issues that we thought were important literally two months ago. And uh, he's never made a counter proposal, so uh, it it indicates pretty clearly that he was waiting to see how the election would come out. Election didn't come out well, and so we're not sure really what he's going to do. But right now, I do know he's working, he's working to try to shore up his votes and uh, and doing what uh, he can to try to, to to woo people to him. So, Congressman, what is the plan? I mean, if McCarthy can't get 218 votes in January. What's the plan? Who is the person who you guys want to see? Well, I think that you're asking the wrong question when you say who is the person you want to see, because uh, obviously I'm not going to get it. And obviously I think Kevin's not going to get it. So to say that only Kevin is the only guy who could be speaker, I think is uh, just an absolute understatement and undervaluation of so many great members that we have, skilled and capable. I mean, I could, you know, J Jim Jordan would do a great job. Mike Johnson in Louisiana would do a good job. There are others who might come forward. The, I'm not, and I'm not meaning to put a target on these guys back. I'm just trying to say that th this conference actually has a lot of people who are skilled and capable, and they will come forward. There are still two yeah. months to go, and uh, I don't think we're as fractured as you might think. I think what what's happening is, is people are realizing we lost, and we lost. Uh, we yeah. gain the majority, but we only have a two or three seat majority. And that's, that, that changes the world that we live in. So let me ask you two questions. Number one, if, if Kevin McCarthy says to you, hey, I read your package now, uh, I'm going to give you every concession that you want, will you vote for Kevin McCarthy? Well, he already undermined half of those concessions at the rules. No, no, no. I, <laughs> okay, but, but, but I'm just asking, I, I, I mean, what I'm trying to figure out is, or is there a group, what I'm trying to get to, to find out is, is there a group of never Kevin, or is this really about getting concessions? Yeah, I think that there's a group of never Kevin. I think, you know, when I went okay. out... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead with your next question. Sure. No, no, no. I just... How many how many of them are there? Because that's, that's what I think is important. How many people are saying, I don't care about the concessions. I, this is about him personally. Well, I will tell you that any three people right now in the conference controls the conference, right? Because that's how thin the majority is. The second thing I would tell you is, um, I, I personally am not making this about Kevin. What, I'm, what I would tell you is my constituents and people I've talked to all over the country in the hundreds of spots that I spoke to, in the hundreds of groups I spoke to, always had a common theme. Will you give us new leadership? 
And if we're going to set the stage for 2024, and we've got to do something different. And I, unfortunately, uh, that means that we need to change the speaker or our leader in the Republicans in Congress. And I think that that we can go forward. We can do so many things that have to be done if we're going to be if we're going to be winning in 2024 as well. So, OK, so, Congressman, I only have 30 seconds. I said I had two questions. That I don't mean to. But, I, but my, my follow up is this. You mentioned Jim Jordan and others. You're the only one who stepped up and put your name up there. Right. And then you just said you wouldn't be the person. But if no one else, that's what I think goes to Lindsay's question. No one else is willing to say I'm willing to be that consensus candidate. McCarthy's the only one so far. And that's where I think there's a lot of concern of saying, OK, I get it. There's to your point. There's another 218 candidates or, or members. Yeah. But no one else is saying I want to do it. Well, what's going to happen is reality will set in. I think people are like, oh, well, what, what do you want? I mean, they're asking the same questions you are. Oh, these guys just want concessions. They want to get on committees. It's not transactional like that. What needs to happen is, is we need to acknowledge that Kevin already walked away saying, we're not going to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. We're not going to impeach anybody because he thinks that's political. He started uh, backing away from some of the tools in the toolbox. Um, the National uh, uh, Defense Authorization Act. Things that we should be doing, he's already backed away from. So it isn't it isn't transactional like that. Although, although I find it interesting that he says, okay, uh, the steering committee will make the decision on, on chairman and, and committee members. But what committees do you guys want? Do you want chairmanships? Those types of things are transactional in nature, and that's part of the problem because the power is centralized in four people in Congress, two from each party, and two from each house. Okay. Congressman Biggs, I appreciate you coming on the show. Have a great weekend. If I don't see you again, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Thank you.